I do a lot of glazing and this is one of my primary glazing colors. Right now I'm just blocking in, getting a sense of the warm and the cold greens that I'm going to be using to kind of get a feel of the painting before I go back in with detail so I'm not too worried about, you know, the, the brush strokes so that it looks messy right now. It's actually, yeah, Central Park. I don't know what time of day, but I would, I don't know actually, probably later in the afternoon. I took it on a kind of a pilgrimage to go see a bunch of museums on the East Coast back in 2008, I think, 2007, something like that, before I moved to Orange County when I still lived in LA. So right now what I'm doing is this is all, to me, this reads as a cold green and this is a warm green and this is cold green and then this has a purple undertone and this has an orange, so it's a tertiary color palette is what I'm pulling from, which will so, I mean, it looks green, sort of, but I don't see the green as plant color, I see it as shapes. So this is for a therapist's office and she was looking for trees and she was looking for something that had a lot of life, not just a straight up landscape painting. She wanted something that had more vibrancy but yet not overwhelming. So I took this picture of Central Park and I had done a painting years ago of it and it occurred to me so I showed her my painting, my original painting and she liked the idea so here I am. I'm painting it and it's actually, I don't know if you can see it in here, but it's on, this is on a special fabric that I, that we're going to install like wallpaper. And so it's in four pieces. And because it's going into this, it's going over a window basically that's, that's looking out over a parking lot and she wants to obscure that. So these are created to scale for that specific space. So it'll look like a window when it's done because it really is a window. And so it has these thick moyens in between these dark moyens. So it's going to be these four panels when it's done. But the whole idea is for it to be energizing. She's a, she's what's called a somatic therapist. So she works with, she does body work and she works with people's emotions and how it manifests in their bodies. And so um, she's using this artwork, I think, as a way to engage some of her clients. This painting, I did this for my uncle back in 2010, based on the same park image. And he actually, he recently died, but before he died, I had given him a painting of mine every year since I was 13. So I have this, actually I think I was 11 when I painted the first one, but so he has this chronology of all my artwork for, you know, however many years, 30 years. And so this is one of my favorites that I ever gave him. This painting is actually, it's, this is my reference and this is a video still that a friend texted me of his backyard in New Jersey of it snowing. I get inspiration from a lot of different places and this just grabbed me. So sometimes I did another painting like this where I took a vintage photograph of horses and I created a very colorful painting called Chasing the Sun and this is that type of, it's that same idea of just when I look at the black and white, there's no, I have no reference for color, so I'm able to play with whatever color I imagine it might be. All the underpainting will be acrylic and the final painting will be oil. I do that a lot and because I want the, I want the color plus I, I like working with acrylic and I like working with oil too. I just, I get different effects and I'm liking this as an underpainting. I like the effect of it.
probably if I had a favorite art supply ever would be RNF pigment sticks. I, as a child, I very rarely used color. I was, I would just draw, and I don't think I ever really painted with color or painted at all until my early 20s. So my, my default is to draw first. So there's a comfort and a familiarity that I have with, with being able to draw with paint. It's like a nice blend.